little trip. Take a little trip. You want answers? I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. And you have offended a Shaolin temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Alepsia is the latest proof of medical marijuana's Box Canyon. Since my days working for normal, I've been a chief proponent of the Box Canyon theory of medical marijuana. In a nutshell, the theory states, if you fight only for medical marijuana, your marijuana is going to be only medical. While medical marijuana as a political strategy has opened up the country to further marijuana reforms, its eventual trajectory lies in the realm of pills, sprays, inhalers, and tinctures of reliable dosage and consistency, manufactured by pharmaceutical companies to eliminate that dreaded side effect, the high. The Box Canyon theory has borne out so far in the increasing qualifying restrictions in successive medical marijuana states. California started medical marijuana in 1996 with its famous catch-all qualification of any other illness for which marijuana provides relief. Thus, anyone with 40 bucks and a compelling story was able to qualify for medical marijuana. So, successive states create stricter qualifying condition lists until you wind up with Illinois' list of 33 very specific polysyllabic conditions requiring detailed medical documentation. The early Western medical marijuana states allowed for patients to grow their own cannabis. Soon, trunk loads of marijuana with direct ties to medical marijuana gardens were being seized by cops in the Midwestern states, leading the last eight states to pass medical marijuana laws that mandate dispensary shopping and do not allow home growing. Even in the Western states, with relatively lax medical marijuana laws, there's a tendency for medical marijuana patients to find themselves separated from the fight for overall legalization by fears that it will impact their medical use. California's Prop 19 and Washington's I-502 face their only organized, well-funded opposition from medical marijuana dispensaries. In Washington, you actually had two campaigning sheriffs arguing over who supported legalization more while dispensary owners were spending prohibition profits to maintain the status quo. Now, the latest verification of the Box Canyon theory comes from the growing calls for legal alepsia. This is the name given to high CBD oil manufactured in Colorado from Charlotte's Web and other plants with a high CBD to THC ratio. Since it was featured in Dr. Sanjay Gupta's CNN weed documentary, parents across the country whose children suffer from intractable epilepsy are clamoring for this miracle cure. The top pediatric oncologist in Utah, of all places, is supporting efforts by State Representative Gage Furr to import Alepsia from Colorado. Furr theorizes that since Alepsia is so low in THC, it is no more illegal than hemp seed oil that you can buy at Whole Foods. And Francis Fillot, the chief of University of Utah's Division of Pediatric Neurology, said, quote, I would like to express my strong belief that CBD-based oils should be available as soon as possible to Utah children with severe epilepsy. The substance is not psychoactive or hallucinogenic. It contains less THC than do other materials that can be legally purchased in Utah, and it has absolutely no abuse potential, end quote. In Pennsylvania... State Senator Dalen Leach has introduced medical marijuana bills over the past few legislative sessions, all to no avail. Now, with the greater exposure to the plight of epileptic children on CNN, Leach will be introducing today a bill that legalizes only high CBD, low THC medical marijuana, and it appears Leach's previous Senate Bill 770, a standard medical marijuana bill with home growing provisions, will be left to die in committee. Meanwhile, GW Pharmaceuticals has begun human trials on THC and CBD for treatment of brain cancer. 
GW is also the manufacturer of Sativex, which is a whole plant cannabis tincture approved for multiple sclerosis treatment in 11 countries and pending in 11 more. And just this week, GW won FDA approval of Epidiolex, its, pharmaceutic, its pharmaceutical version of high CBD epilepsia. The uh, approval was as an orphan drug, and this designation fast-tracks GW's efforts to test and market their Epidiolex to children suffering from Dravet's syndrome, like the little girl who benefited from the high CBD oil in the CNN documentary. With increasing speed, the opponents of marijuana reform have realized that the tales of desperate epileptic children experiencing miracle relief from cannabis products opens the public's mind to legalizing medical marijuana. So now they are pruning away that support by approving pharmaceuticals that treat those conditions as well or better than traditional whole plant cannabis. Soon, when there's Sativex and Epidiolex and other formulations that reliably treat spasticity and seizures, pain and nausea, all without the dreaded high, you can bet the dispensaries will be forced to clear out their plant inventories in favor of measured, tested pharmaceuticals approved by the government and paid for by health insurance. And then, where are the consumers who enjoy the plant? Where are they left? They're left in the same moral frame as people who chug cough syrup or crush and snort OxyContin, recreational abusers of legitimate medicine. Medical marijuana is now in the hands of pharmaceutical companies. It's time for the people who support the plant for all of its uses to come together and fight for full legalization, possession, home growing, and legal markets, which after all is the best medical marijuana access of all. We are now enjoying majority support for legalization nationwide and even statewide in places like Texas and Louisiana. So why bother continuing to push a medical frame that only serves to enrich GW Pharmaceuticals? All right now, class is in session. The Dover got something he want to lay on y'all. Check this out right here. All right, let's pay attention in class, pay attention in class. I'm gonna drop these three jewels on you. Check it. Number one, when you're thinking about something, you're just thinking. Number two, when you believe in something. All right, Radical Rant uh, concluded quicker than I expected, so I just want to throw some music here in the background. Then you know. But uh, I am starting to form a very strident and new political philosophy with respect to medical marijuana. I think we're being duped now. I think we're being tricked. I think we're being hoisted by our own petard. I think we're in a situation where when we first started medical marijuana, we would bring forth right front and center, we'd bring out the cancer patient. We'd bring out the paralyzed person in the wheelchair. We'd bring out the, the severe multiple sclerosis patient. And we'd say, oh my God, how could you let these people suffer? How could you not vote for medical marijuana? How could you not allow these people the choice of the safest, most effective therapy for their, their condition, especially when so many other traditional therapies won't work? Well, folks, that's starting to get turned on us now. Now, like State Senator Dalen Leach is going to introduce bills that legalize only high CBD marijuana and only for those, those rare conditions that it will treat. And then those people no longer have any reason to fight for whole plant cannabis because they got theirs. They got the solution that took care of their little girl, that took care of their child. And there's no reason for them to support any further marijuana reforms. We are going to slowly but surely lose the people who are medical users of cannabis as the pharmaceutical companies are able to come up with solutions for them that work just as well or better Solutions that are not illegal under federal law. Solutions that won't require a, ma a massive change in the law. Solutions that will be paid for by their health insurance coverage, especially or eventually if Obamacare rolls out. So we face a, a crossroads, I believe, now that we've gotten two states that have legalized and now that we're moving into two election cycles, 2014 and 2016, where legalization is the topic of discussion, 
it is time for us to strike while the iron is hot and to stand up for just the right to get high. Everything about this Alepsia uh, story that we've been talking about is predicated on it's not psychoactive, it's not hallucinogenic, there's no abuse potential, it can't get you high, it won't get you high. The continuing demonization of people who merely like to get high. What is wrong with that? It's time for us to start standing up for that right. Or we'll have fewer and fewer marijuana users standing up with us. It's great music here from Don Redman and his orchestra chant of the weed, which reminds me tonight at 8 p.m. Pacific time, we got a new edition of the new Viper Hour, where we celebrate the reefer jazz culture of the early 20th century. Going all the way back to Louis Armstrong and Cab Calloway up through the Rat Pack of the late 50s and early 60s. If they're singing about drugs or alcohol, and alcohol, which is a drug anyway, if they're singing about drugs, we've got it. <laughs> On the new Viper Hour, and a little bit of sex, too, from time to time. Join us at 8 p.m. tonight live. It's always a good time here at the new Viper Hour. But that's all the time we got here for hour one of the Russ Belvale Show. And thank you for being with us through 300 independent episodes. We began on June 4th, 2012. We're 300 episodes in. Someone asked me, when would episode 420 be? Well, I guess it'd be about 24 weeks away if we do five shows a week. Where does that put us? Is that somewhere close to actual April 20th? Maybe not. We'll see. Remember this week, we've got more shows coming to you, including tomorrow, we hope to go across the pond with Normal UK. On Wednesday, we've got Betty Retro from the new group, Parents for Responsible Cannabis Use. The Black Tuna himself, Bobby Platshorn, and Brad Lane from Cannabis Planet TV are with us Thursday with some incredible announcements about new distribution. And then we hope to get Danny Danko on the line from Amsterdam this Friday. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. That's all the time we got, but stay tuned for Hour 2 Toker Talk Radio. We got more news on Zohydro and other stories. For everyone here at 420 Radio, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, take care of each other, Tokers. Tokers.